John 4, 23 through 24 reveals what Jesus says about it. But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Somewhere, somewhere in between all of our religious role playing is the word of God. And that's where we need to be. That's where we belong with the word of God. Worship then encompasses the entire life ascribing worth and worthiness to God by the way we live. When we finally submit to the Lordship of Jesus, we will give him our worship no matter where we are or what we are doing. Worship is what you do because you are a worshiper. You don't worship to become a worshiper. You worship because you're already a worshiper. That's the state of your being, or at least it should be if we remember who we are and who resides in us now expressing our love for God through Jesus Christ. It's about honoring him. And the only external motivation we need to do that already exists inside of us. It's already there. Wow, no amount of the right kind of music, no amount of the right kind of atmosphere, uh, no amount of uh, the right style that you may prefer, you know, no amount of mood setting is necessary because the mood was set when the Holy Spirit came to reside in you. The moment you said yes and accepted, believed, and confessed, Jesus Christ is Savior, you became a child of the King. There's nothing inherently wrong with any of those things I just mentioned, by the way. Nothing wrong with atmosphere. But that's, that's an outside in. This is an inside out process. Worship is inside out, not outside in. It shouldn't matter if the lights are up or down or gray or green or, or where you are or what you're doing. We're called to an everlasting preoccupation with Jesus the Christ. God-centered worship, not church-centered not religious organization centered, not pastor centered, God centered worship. It has to be that you come to the warm, you realize it's just you and Jesus. Because when you're that way, nothing else around you matters. Your worship is not about external circumstances. You know, circumstantial worship, we've all been there before. We've tried to put God in a box by saying, well, worship is just this. And we're going to have a worship service. Yes, yes, it is. But it's because worshipers came together to do that, not because you're coming in here to try to become one. We, listen, we're not in the stands. You know, we're not fans watching the game. We're, we're on the team. It's a deep sense of need that prompts worship. The need for a Savior each and every second of our lives. And that's the fundamental nature of experiencing true worship. It's who you are.